So we're going to focus on standard deviation tonight. Um, standard deviation is our most common way for measuring spread. We already looked at uh, range and we looked at five number summaries, minimum, maximum. But really standard deviation and mean are our most common numerical descriptions of things, of data sets. So let's talk a little bit about what standard deviation is. So as we go through this example here, let's look at what's happening. So basically what we have here is that um, we have data on pets owned by a group of nine children. And here's the data set right here. And earlier it was determined that the mean pets was five. A, we've got a dot plot of the data on the left there. A, the data value one is four units below the mean, if we look at that. A, the data value seven here A, is two units above the mean. The arrows um, in the figure, those are marking those two deviations from the mean. So the deviation basically is just showing us how far the data varies around the mean. And that's what standard deviation is also going to show us. Standard deviation is the typical distance the values are, values in a distribution are, from the mean. So the table below, what we have here is... And here's our data sets here on this table on the left. And in the column in the middle are the deviations. So we took every data point and we subtracted the mean from it. Okay? And we get a value with those. But if we add all of those values up, they equal zero. They equal zero because we are looking at the spread around the mean. Remember, mean is our balance point. So if mean is the balance point, eh, then we should get a zero when we add all these deviations up because as a whole, they should be, there should be no deviation from the mean. They should all uh, balance each other out, hence the mean being the, the balance point. Well, that's not very helpful information to us. So basically, we had two choices. You could either square or take absolute values. The decision by the math powers that be was to square all these deviations. Okay, that gets rid of our problem here of the positive and negative deviations canceling each other out. Okay, so when we square all the deviations, we get this over here. We add them all up and we get a sum of 52. Well, now I can take that sum and I can divide it by, we do not divide it by our number of distributions, we divide it by n minus 1. Remember, n is our sample size. So in this case, our sample size was 9. Okay? And so 9 minus 1 would be 8. So I can take this sum, this 52 here, and I can divide it by 8. And what that's going to give me is that's going to give me an average. And it's going to give me an average squared deviation. Remember, I squared these deviations here. So it's going to give me an average squared deviation, for lack of space here. So basically what this means okay, is that 6.5 is my average squared deviation from the mean. Okay. That is called the variance. The problem we have with the variance is because this is a squared deviation, my units now are squared pets. Basically, I'm saying that I've got 6.5 squared pets okay, around away from the mean on average. So I want to get back to pets and not squared pets. So if I come back now and I take the square root of this, okay, I get 2.55 pets. That is my standard deviation. Okay, and that standard deviation is my average distance the values in my data set are from the mean. So I've got some values in my data set over here that are going to be um, one or two spots away from the mean. I've got some values that are going to be four spots away from the mean. So 2.55 is my average deviation away from the mean or average distance from the mean. Okay, and so we that's how we're going to calculate it. We'll show you how you can do this on the calculator. We're not going to be doing this by hand, and we're going to talk a little bit more about what still what this means. Okay, so let's look again at what this means and how this looks. We kind of just jumped right in there. Okay, so our standard deviation, remember your notation here, 
Okay, so standard deviation is S with a uh, subscript X. And our variance here is S squared subscript X. Okay, remember to calculate your standard deviation, we need the variance first. So we square all of our deviations. You can see that happening here. If you had a large data set and you were asked to show your work, even if you did this on the calculator, you still you can't just spit out a number. They may they're going to ask you to show your work. Okay? And this right here is how you show your work. You'll notice they put right here these little dots in the middle signifying that they would do that for all the way through. So if you're again, if you have a really long formula um, that for like a really large data set, let's say you were looking at like 25 numbers and you're going to punch them all in your calculator. You can put, you can show your work for the first number, show your work for the second data point, show your work for the very last data point. That's why it says XN. Like for instance, in our case, it might be X25. Okay. And then, and you don't have to show it for all of the ones in the middle. Okay. And that qualifies as showing your work for something like this. Okay. Um, and then remember we divide um, by n minus 1. Okay. When we summarize the formula, it ends up looking like this. Okay. 1 over n minus 1 times the sum of all of our deviations squared of our data points. Okay. Remember, don't let these crazy formulas um, scare you. They're really not so bad. Okay. And, but remember, to actually get our standard deviation, we need to go back and we need to take the square root of what we are, what we calculated as our variance. We need to actually get our square root. And what this will tell you is again, this is going to tell us hey, our typical or our average distance from the mean. Hey, the average distance or the typical distance of the values in the data set from the mean. And so when you describe or interpret this, you would need to put that in context. And we'll look at some examples for that. Okay, so below here does the exact same thing. It summarizes, again, how to find standard deviation. Right, we're finding the distance of each observation. That's the xi points right, from the mean and the square of each of those. Okay, and then we find the average there by dividing by n minus 1. Remember, that gives us our variance. And then we take our variance and we take the square root of it to get our standard deviation. Okay, so let's look at a few more points regarding standard deviation. Uh, we made note earlier of the notation before, that this is our notation for standard deviation. When we put this in your calculator, um, you will actually see two standard deviations. One of them will look like that. Okay, this is for the population, right? This is for the sample. Very rarely, if we had every single data point in the population, okay, then we could use this one right here. Okay, usually we will not, and usually we will be using this value, which is from the sample. Okay, remember, this is measuring um, of the spread around the mean. So for us to be able to use center standard deviation, our center needs, we, the measure of center that we use needs to be the mean. If you're using a measure of center, let's say you're using the median, then you're not using standard deviation. You would not use standard deviation. Standard deviation is always going to be uh, greater than or equal to zero. It is only zero, so it can only be zero, zero if there is no variability, because that's what standard deviation is showing us, right? It's showing us the typical distance or the average distance these data values, these data points are from the mean. So if, they were, if there is no variability, meaning every data point is exactly the same, all nine kids that they talked to had five pets, then we'd have a standard deviation of zero. There'd be no variability. Otherwise, the standard deviation is going to be larger than zero because they're going to spread out around that mean and there's going to be some kind of deviation there. Okay, um, when we use units, when we get into our context and context and things like that, a okay, standard deviation does have units and it will be the same units as whatever the data points were. Okay, so we talked about pets versus squared pets. 
right? Standard deviation is going to have the same units as the data set did, as the mean did. Okay? The units for the mean will be the same as well. Okay? Standard deviation is also not resistant, just like the mean. If there are big, large outliers, then that will um, really change your standard deviation. It will make it significantly larger. There will be a much larger uh, deviation because there's a lot more variability. So your average distance from the mean is going to get bigger. Okay, so let's look at this example here. So we've got the height in inches of five starters on a basketball team are 67, 72, 76, 76, and 84. Find the mean and show your work. Okay, if it asks you to show your work, then they mean show your work. If it is an F, if it is a free response problem and you are asked to show your work, you will not get an E if you did not show your work. And so make sure that you go ahead and you lay it all out there, what your work would look like for showing the mean here. 67 plus 72 plus 76 plus 76 plus 84. You could do the dot, dot, dot in the middle. You could do the three dots right here. Instead of putting in the 76s, you could put in those three dots. This wasn't very long data set, so I didn't think it was that big of a deal. Um, let's see, for the five starters, I show my work, and I end up calculating a mean of 75 inches. I'm going to put my context in there, which is my units in this case. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. Okay, so number two asks us to show, uh, make a table that shows for each value its deviation from the mean and its squared deviation from the mean. Okay, so if I'm going to make a table, I need my observations first. Okay, so I had 67, 72, 76, 76, and 84. Okay, I'm going to abbreviate a little bit here so it doesn't get too, too messy. Deviation and then my squared deviations from the mean. And I'm going to erase that last little bit. Okay, so my, obs my deviations here, if my mean is 75, right, then my deviation, 67 minus 75, is going to give me negative 8. When I square that, I get 64. Okay, I'm not going to keep trying to show you the work because it'll get too messy. So 72 minus 75 is going to give me negative 3, right? When I square that, I get 9. 76 minus 75 gives me 1. Square that and I get 1. Same thing for the other value of 76. And 84 minus 75 gives me 9. Square that and I get 81. So number 3 then is asking me to calculate the variance and standard deviations um, from what I've got there. So my totals, okay, so my totals of my deviation column, right, that's going to end up adding up to 0. But my totals in my squared deviation column add up to 156. So when I add all of these together here, I get 156. So if I want my variance, so my variance would be 156 over 4. Remember the 4 came from the n minus 1. Our n minus 1 in this case is 5 minus 1, which would be 4. So my variance would be 39, okay? And so in this case, then, those units are inches squared. I don't want inches squared. I need to take the square root of that so I can get back down to inches. So my standard deviation is going to be the square root of 39, which is 6.24 inches, okay? And so interpret the standard deviation in this setting. So again, I'm using my context and I'm explaining what that standard deviation means. So it means that the player's height typically vary by about 6.4 inches from the mean height, which is 75 inches. Okay, because remember my standard deviation again is how is how the typical or average distance my data points are from the mean. So in context, we're talking about basketball players' heights. So I know the mean height is 75 inches, so I know that the player's height typically varies by about 6.424 inches from that mean of 75 inches. So a few final reminders. Remember that if you're choosing to use, so when you, 
you have to describe, you have to choose what your measure of center you're going to use, right? And as a general rule, we're going to use mean or we're going to use median. Okay? We've talked a little bit about this in class, that um, median is better for a skewed distribution and mean is better for um, basically data that's not skewed. Okay? So keep in mind, though, that if you're using mean, then you are using standard deviation. Okay? If you are using median, then you are using IQRs, okay? but you cannot mix the two. Like you can't give us the, give the mean as your description of center, and then give the IQR summary information as your description of spread. Okay? You won't get uh, full credit for that. So mean with standard deviation, median with IQR stuff. Okay? Also remember that graphs are your best friend. Numerical summaries um, give give information. A, um, but they don't show all the details. They don't show multiple peaks. They don't show clusters. A, so show your data in addition to describing your data. Okay? All right, that will be the end for Chapter 1.